Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, everybody. You know, today I thought we would do a quick uh, video on spattering and spritzing. If you like textural type paintings, at some point you're probably going to want to spatter a little bit. Interestingly enough, there are a number of ways to do it. Let's get right into it. The easiest way, you're painting along, and I've got this, this is loaded up because I was anticipating doing some spattering, but you're painting along, and essentially you use the same brush, and I just flick it off of my finger. Now that put that kind of makes a, a linear pattern when you do it that way. So sometimes I will alternate between doing that and tapping on another brush. Now that gives you uh, just a more direct drop. Now keep in mind when you do this sort of thing, you want to get comfortable with doing this. Don't do this on a painting if you've never done it before or you're doing a new version of it that you've never tried. Um, get a piece of scratch paper and try it on there first. You can use poster board even. It, it doesn't have to be anything great. You just want to see what the pattern's going to be like. But generally, this is the most immediate and simple way while you're painting along is just flick it off your brush or tap it off your brush. Now on the tap I'm getting bigger droplets but they're dropping more direct. Now keep a blotter handy if you look at that and you say oh that's way too much or way too strong you can immediately blot it back. Do keep in mind though they will dry lighter than when you first put them down. The next method um, involves what I would call stiff brushes. Now, this is great if you're gonna do a lot more spattering or you wanna set aside a brush that you can pick up at any point and spatter. And the mechanics are about the same, a little different. Now, in all of these cases, this is a fan brush, a fairly nice fan brush. The bristles are stiff and they're separated, although these are a little softer than these. This is a, a cheap kind of a bristle brush you find in craft stores or, or even in home improvement stores. It's got a real stiff bristle and that's great for spattering because it's got a lot of snaps. And you've probably seen these. These are glue brushes. You can buy these by the bag full at a home improvement store. But same thing. Cheap acrylic bristles that are separated, stiff, and have a lot of snap. Let me show you each of these now. A couple ways I do fan brush, just the same way running it along the finger, or like this, or like this. You know, you get a slightly different pattern. You even get these little kind of stringy effects. Now what I'm showing you here is just basically something, if you t intend or want to try to do some spatter, find a method you're comfortable with and works well for you, and you can predict what you're going to do or what you're going to get. I tend, this is one of the methods I tend to use a lot in addition to just using a brush while I'm painting for the occasional flick of paint. I like this because I can get it to do a lot of different things. It's a glue brush, it's very similar. Let me show you yet a different way. It's my thumb. Just using my thumb. But because they've got so much snap and stiffness, they really fling that paint on there. Same with a brush like this. I got it loaded up. It's loaded heavy, so I'm getting a lot of paint. Um, you can basically go back to your palette, knock some of those droplets off, and then come back, and you'll get a finer spray. I've got a lot of a lot of control with this one. But again, these are stiff bristles with a lot of snap. And they're giving me a good bit of control. Very similar to the fan brush. In this same genre, a toothbrush, or this happens to be like a cleaning brush you'd get at a home improvement center. These are nylon bristles, not steel. But essentially this is like a, a very large toothbrush. I tend to load these, you can dip them on your palette like you do regular brushes. I tend to load them up 
with a brush. I probably should be using a big round, but I use my thumb. Now, toothbrushes or these kind of brushes tend to produce a very, very fine spatter. And that's usually when I bring them into use. I want a lot of texture like on stone or a foreground. So you can see a lot of really fine stuff. And that's what tooth, a toothbrush or a brush like this will do. Okay, I think it kind of goes without saying too that this is kind of messy. I've surrounded my background with paper towel mainly because it absorbs it and you know, you can pick up droplets with your hand and end up transferring it to something you don't want to. Just keep in mind, it's a very messy thing. And everything I've showed you so far, uh, I didn't have this in the picture, but I've just done it on a palette like this. Now, if you're going to do something with a brush like this or this, and you're going to do a lot of it, you may want to mix your paint up separately in a dish so you have a good quantity of it. This is a little dish I just got at Arts and Crafts store. Okay, now here's a different method that you may not be familiar with. Um, this is a spatter screen I picked up. The way these are intended to be used is you paint pigment on the screen. And it's held in these openings, basically. And you take uh, a straw, in this case I just have a bendy straw, any straw will do. You hold the screen and that's a danger this so it's, it's something you want to practice with it's hard to demonstrate without getting my head in there but basically you're just blowing the pigment and color out of these uh out of this net out of this mesh now i'm having trouble here because i'm trying to keep my head out of the shot um, i would actually have my head directly over looking straight down and i have more control but I want you to see what's happening. Again, you paint pigment on there. Once you get used to it and you practice with it, it actually provides a lot of control. And depending on how hard you blow, uh, you'll get bigger drops or smaller drops. I'll show you one more time. It's important that the gaps in the mesh be filled with liquid and pigment. I think this is a bit of trouble to go through unless you're going to do large areas. Personally, when I use this, if I use this, I kind of mask areas off. Now, you don't have to hard mask. You, in any of these spattering techniques, you can mask softly by just tearing up pieces of paper towel. That's what I do. And just loosely laying them over the areas that you don't want to spatter. That's what I call loose masking or soft masking. That just assures that you don't get droplets where you don't want them and you, generally you don't get a hard edge. With a little practice you can more precisely place droplets right where you want them. Would not go to the trouble of buying this unless you plan on doing a lot of spatter or you're making spatter a big part of your technique. Now talking about spritzing would not be complete unless we talked about spritzing clear water. Clear water is a great way to achieve some of amazing effects that you can't achieve basically any other way. If you can get one of these spray bottles that has this kind of a trigger, not the pump sprayer where it pumps down from the top because all you'll get there is a mist. But this kind of a sprayer, if you pull hard you'll get a mist, but if you just barely pull back you'll get basically spatter. Now you can also spatter with brushes, any of the brushes I showed you using paint. You can also use any of those techniques for clear water. But here's a couple of things you could do with clear water spatter. If you do it too soon while it's still wet like this, basically those, those areas will just close back up. However, 
You can do it around edges. And you'll start getting these little spidery wet things. But it takes your edges and some of the paint will creep out into the edges and it just can make some really interesting effects. Okay, I still have quite a few wet droplets up here. So another thing you can do is you can paint along over those wet droplets. So basically my paint is hitting some dry spots on the paper and it's hitting some wet spots and just look what happens. Now by the way this doesn't have to be clear water. It can be another color pigment that you do this to. And I'm just painting where some of my brush hits dry paper and some of it hits wet spots. If you want to go back Add a few more droplets. Alright, this has had a little time to dry. It's still very wet, but a lot of the sheen and ultra wetness is gone. So, this is what happens. As you put clear water droplets into drying paint, you're adding a lot of miniature little wet washes. And you see I'm getting a bunch of miniature backgrounds. Essentially water spots. So guys, that's some spattering stuff, and if you've never used spatter, um, go out and try it and have some fun with it. Thanks guys. Hope this was a help to you. You'll like and subscribe if it was, and we'll see you next time.